Okay, today's video is going to be different. I haven't seen anybody else do this. I looked around, couldn't see anything. So let me explain the concept. In my Discord server, there's going to be a channel. If you're not in there, there's going to be links in the description and it's going to be pinned in the comments. Once you're in the server, you see a channel called Clips to Analyze. Anybody can access the channel. You can send whatever. Please don't send whatever. <laughs> Typically, you would send something that you want to learn from. Or if you're just curious to see what my input would be on that situation. I'm going to go over the clip, tell you what you did right or wrong, and tell you what I would have done in that exact situation. So the concept is simple. Sending a clip. Try to include context so I know what the situation is. Send it to Clips to Analyze. I'm going to go over it and add my input. And I might make a video out of it if you guys enjoy this one. Also, if you're trying to help me finesse the algorithm, drop a like and a comment. It does help a lot, honestly. Anyways, the way it's going to go, we're going to play it in its entirety first. And then the second time around, we're going to talk over it. Oh, probably. Because I'm right outside of that door. Dude, he's so low. He's so low. Alright, first thing you do is you peek from this door. I would never peek from this door because the whole thing is wall bangable. So essentially, you're just peeking out in the open. You're not behind any cover. I already made a video on it. Stop doing this. What I would do is find another angle to hold. You push up, trying to get a pick while they're fighting somebody else, which is fine. But you also got to consider your position. You opening this door and a force in a fight versus two people, you're just putting yourself at a disadvantage. I know you did get one pick, but most of the time they're just going to outgun you since the only angles you have on each other is a narrow doorway. What I would have done right here instead of running from room to room is just force the fight, stick my ground in the office since his timing is pretty predictable. And it looks like you know that because you run away every time he's about to peek. So just fight it. If you're forced in a fight like this, you might as well just stick to it, bro. Balls to the wall. And what caused you to die right here is you're standing in the same position that you already peeked through times before so by that time the enemy already knows where to aim and shoot because he's seen you there three times before It's good, the timing's nice, bait is good. Only thing I'd say is when you open this door and he ran out, you wouldn't have been ready for that. Some people play this game weird, so you just gotta be ready for everything. For this last kill, the bait is nice. It is predictable though, versus someone that knows what they're doing. I'm guessing these guys didn't since they locked themselves in the room in the first place. But good kills though, nonetheless. Okay, based off this clip, you know someone's on your right side, around that general direction. You don't know exactly, but around there somewhere. So don't hard peek unless you know exactly where they are. If you hard peek and you don't know where they are, you're just going to get headshotted before you can register where they are. Especially if it's a left hand. Luckily, he wasn't aiming at head level, but still, you don't want to let your enemy depict the outcome of the fight. Good two picks, obviously the last guy was pushing up off his teammate's contact, common mistake that people do, but good stuff man, they look juiced. One more thing for those of you who don't know why he ADS for both the kills, it's because his arm was blacked. If you got a broken arm, one of your arms is blacked, your hipfire is going to be inaccurate. Roll the next clip. Okay, <laughs> I love situations like these because it teaches people do not pull grenades if you don't know where the enemy is. And if you do know where he is, maybe think, hmm, can he push me? Do I have time to take my gun back out if he pushes me? One thing I'd say for you is try timing your flashlight toggle better because if you turn it on before you swing, he now knows where you are and he can anticipate your swing. The second kill was a lot better with the timing, so just, you know, be consistent with it. 
I don't know why this guy also pulled her grenade though. I I guess he wanted to join his teammate in the stash, but don't don't do that. Don't don't pull grenades if the enemy's close. Okay, so with this, I see you're pretty aware of what's going on. You're switching targets a lot. I say you're switching a bit too much. You're not really committing to a fight. The problem with this is when your teammates or your enemies catch on to this, they can start to predict you very well. If you pre-fire a corner and then you're focused on somebody else, they can time that and use the thing that you think you're doing well against you. And you can see if you pay attention, that's what they're doing here. You're shooting and switching, then they're taking more space. You're giving up space too easily, that's what I would say. Once you give up too much space, you have nowhere to go, especially if it's a big team trying to corner you, you're putting yourself at a massive disadvantage. Map control is key if you're solo fighting teams. Right here, it looked like you wasn't sure if you wanted to push that or not. I don't blame you, it would have been like a left hand versus right hand, but you backed up and gave him even more space. What I would have done is push the other guy, put pressure on him when he pulled the grenade, because you can hear him pull the pin while you was holding the other guy. The angle you're holding right now is pretty fucking bad. I'm surprised the other guys didn't push up because if they did at the same time, you would have had to sweat very hard to make it out of that one. And I notice as well, you're playing at the pace that these guys are setting. You're not setting the pace. And what I mean by that is you're not making the moves, the enemies are making the moves, and then you're trying to counter what the enemies are doing. So, so don't wait for them to do something. You do something, even if it's some weird shit. Take a 1v1 fight, take your chances, because you have better odds in a 1v1 than the situation you're at right now. It looks like around this time when you get shot at, you're like, okay, this is a shitty spot to hold, let me just push him. So you finally commit and then you kill him. I would have done this long, long time ago. Instead of relying on the other team to make a play, you make the play. Set the tone of the fight because guaranteed, if you took a 1v1 fight at the start, you probably would have won it considering how passive and scared these guys were playing. All you need is a little bit of confidence, man. Plus you got the bow, which is built for close range, so use it to your advantage. It's like the bow is not built for one taps, it's built for close range, like up close and personal, so use it to your advantage, man. GG's though, good shots. If you enjoyed the video, different type of video, it took me a minute to edit it, I'm not gonna lie. But if you enjoyed it, I might 
I might keep it like a series or something. Remember, if you're not on my Discord server, watch the intro of the video again. My Discord is going to be linked in the comments and also in the description. So check it out. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate the support too. Love you. Don't miss me too much.